Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, June 16th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. It's been several days since I last made a video on this. We're still watching this disturbance in Vest 92L in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And in the last several days since the weekend, it really hasn't moved a whole lot as expected, but eventually it's going to start moving northward into the northwest Gulf of Mexico over the next couple of days. It's still bringing a lot of heavy rain to Central America, but remains a pretty disorganized disturbance. And what used to be the center is actually buried down here now over Mexico, kind of drifted inland. And what we're left with is a very loose region of rotating flow, very weak. And we're starting to get a refocusing of the system toward the northeast as all this thunderstorm activity begins to break out as moisture is getting funneled northward. And we're having a change in the upper level flow that's going to allow this surge in moisture to continue marching northward over the Gulf of Mexico. And this new thunderstorm activity will likely cause the circulation that is currently poorly defined to tighten up just a little bit and start moving northward slowly over time, eventually ending up in this area south of eastern Texas or Louisiana on Friday and Saturday. And so that's the general evolution that we're expecting. I'm about to dive in the weeds on this for you a little bit, but just keep in mind throughout the video, this is a typical early season type of tropical or subtropical system where it's going to be really heavy and wet on the east side, and we're talking about a wide swath of rainfall and potential flooding impacts for the North Gulf Coast, and that's likely to be the outcome of this regardless of the details. I'm going to talk about some of those details, but don't lose sight of that fact as we talk about those. If we look at the water vapor satellite loop here, we're going to see that we have a system that's entangled with an upper level trough, which is kind of what gives it this early season type of feel. We have an upper level trough over Texas and westerly flow across the northern Gulf. And then we have the flow kind of dipped down here and we have a second short wave that's currently sitting over top of our area of low level rotating flow. So you'll see the strong westerly flow aloft and then just a little bit of rotation here and then turning back westerly. And so this entanglement with this upper level low is a uh, meaning that there's a lot of dry air in here, a little bit of shear going on. So we have this westerly flow pushing off most of the moisture and convection to the northeast of where the low level center is, which is somewhere in here. Again, poorly defined at this moment. But what's changing is that as this trough backs away over Texas and this trough develops over the, the Bay of Campeche, we're starting to get more of this southwesterly flow aloft, which is allowing this moisture to surge northward. And so again, we're having this convection break out north of the Yucatan. And how this convection evolves over the next day or day and a half will be very important to the ultimate evolution of 92L because this convection has an impact on the upper level flow as it usually tries to force outflow radially outward from this area of convection in all directions and that can modify the flow and since this upper level trough is weak that's going to have an impact by trying to push against this westerly flow and try to change the direction of the wind flow and that's going to matter a lot going forward. I'll show you kind of how this works on the GFS we're going to start at the low levels here, looking at the 850 millibar vorticity. So if I go back to kind of the beginning here, this is today. So a very loose, ill-defined circulation centered over the Bay of Campeche and this moisture starting to surge northward on the eastern side. As we go forward, what happens on the GFS is all this convection north of the Yucatan starts to refocus a new uh, center of the circulation. Now, really, the center is still down here, but the focus of action is this area of extra spin or vorticity on the northeast side and so on this model that kind of goes northward toward Louisiana on Friday and so we end up with this elongated elliptical circulation that is heavily weighted toward the northeast side and a pretty asymmetric generally weak kind of storm but it's the kind of thing where you would get strong southerly flow potential for coastal flooding storm surge and lots of rain moving into this portion of the southern US and likely not much would be happening on this western side if anything. We can see that kind of in the moisture field on the GFS where you'll see all this moisture kind of get funneled northward. You'll get this area of deep green here, deep moisture on the eastern side of this and again the circulation is centered in here but the GFS likes to focus this northeastern side which is a rather typical of the model and likely will happen to some extent but you can see this gets into Louisiana quite early uh, on Friday and whatever's left over water here the main circulation is pretty dry by comparison again everything's happening on the eastern side now if we look at how this evolved aloft 
This came about because on the GFS during today and tomorrow, again, we have this upper level trough over the Gulf and we have this persistent southwesterly flow that keeps the shear going. There's always dry air underneath the trough. So the west side has dry air. You could see that on the moisture plot. There's some brown and lighter gray in there. So dry on the west side and the shear is making sure that all of the moisture and rainfall and wind kind of stays on the eastern side of the cyclone during this forecast. Now the GFS and other models have been fighting over how exactly this flow will look. In this particular forecast, it's all the southwesterly stuff and this trough is pretty strong. But just a couple of runs ago yesterday on the GFS, the look was a little bit different and you had more of a looping around of the flow to out of the southeast and you'll see this bulge, this little bit of ridging here, this rounded out carved area where there's a pocket of lower shear on Thursday as the storm starts to move north. And as that kind of forecast came about yesterday on the GFS, we ended up with a more focused cyclone farther west and lighter shear here and a more symmetric cyclone. So if we go to the moisture plot and we go back a couple of forecasts, you'll see that there's a little bit of a difference here. We had a little bit farther west cyclone moisture wrapping around more to the north side than it is on the current forecast and just a slightly more organized kind of look with rain extending farther westward, maybe a little bit more wind on the north side at the coast on the GFS. Not a strong storm or a hurricane by any means, but a slightly more organized storm on the GFS. Uh, the more recent runs again have been drier on the west side and more asymmetric and weaker because the storm is experiencing more shear on the current runs of the GFS. And this seems to be because on the model, there's a debate over how much the thunderstorm activity happening over the central Gulf, which again is happening right now, how much will that change this upper level trough and push it around? How much will it change the upper level flow and bend it out of the southeast as opposed to letting the southwesterly flow continue? That will strongly modify the favorability for the cyclone to get organized as it comes north. We can use the German model as an example here of what kind of the worst case for this storm would be in the sense that what could allow this to get just a little bit stronger and more organized over the northern Gulf. The German model is in the camp that the GFS was yesterday where within a day by tomorrow on Thursday the flow has been modified to be more out of the southeast aloft and our system is, is here in this pocket of lower shear that's trying to develop and so as this comes north on the model uh, you'll see that we have this rounded out pocket of outflow curving anticyclonically aloft and this is a much nicer situation for the storm than a situation where the flow is still straight out of the southwest the whole time. So if we look at the precipitation field on the model at this time by Saturday morning, you'll see a more symmetric looking cyclone with a more compact field of precipitation and maybe just a little bit more wind in there and a slightly more westerly track. So in terms of watching whether this could actually become a, a bona fide storm with a little bit of wind, this is probably what you would call kind of the worst case where you get that lower shear uh, with that southeasterly flow aloft and a more symmetric looking cyclone. And so this is kind of the range of possibilities we're talking about, anywhere from this to something much more strung out like on the GFS, very elongated, very east side weighted with a fire hose of moisture coming north either way on the east side. That's kind of the range of possibilities we're talking about here. The European model for reference is kind of in the middle on this, kind of takes a piece northward in Louisiana and keeps a cyclone kind of toward the west here and then bending toward the northeast after that, uh, but not, not as strong as on the German model, and again, very east side weighted with the southerly flow. Keeping in mind again that, you know, even with weak storms like this in the northern Gulf, we could get storm surge flooding, even with 30 or 40 mile per hour winds coming on shore. So that's always gonna be a concern, and heavy rain is gonna be the primary factor here. Water-related hazards, we've got the official forecast showing a lot of rain over the next five days expected anywhere from eastern Texas to the Florida Panhandle and all the states in between with Louisiana and Mississippi likely to get the most rainfall here going forward. So this is going to be the primary impact to focus on. We're not really expecting, you know, like a hurricane to develop out of this seems unlikely at the moment. This is more likely to be broad and messy, uh, which most model runs currently suggest will be the case. So we'll keep an eye on this as it develops currently very loosely defined, but you can see that even while loosely defined, there's a lot of heavy weather here waiting to come north Friday and Saturday 
into the North Gulf Coast region. So regardless of how this part ends up looking, whether it wraps up tightly or not, you can have all this water coming in. So uh, focusing on the water related hazards and stay tuned to your local NWS office for details for your local area on what kind of flooding impacts could be expected as several inches of rain are possible over a wide area. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.